Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Uh, as you can see, I'm in my new apartment now, and I've also got a new microphone. So hopefully it sounds okay, because I had to make some, some minor desk adjustments. So, in this video, I'll share with you how to create this pretty cool card stacking effect in Elementor, which basically means on scroll, the cards will stack on top of each other, and they'll take slightly at the sticking point. And then at the end of the section, they'll remain in the same position as they are, and you can scroll down onto the next section. And then it also works in reverse, where they'll unstack and unrotate as you scroll back up. Uh, you can use containers for these cards or uh, images. It's your preference. I've used images for the purpose of this video. And I'll show you now how to get it all set up to work like this. So what I've got here is our main parent container set up with the text in the left. So that's this container here, which I've named text. And the cards container will be on the right here. So I've named this one cards. So within here will either be your images or your containers, whatever you want to choose for your cards. So the text container, well, the parent container, I've set this up just with a 80 pixel column gap. So that's this gap in between the two containers. And I've also set it up with eight rem of padding at the top and bottom. So that's this space in here. The text container, I've set this up to contain a heading, a text editor, an icon list, and a button. But that's completely up to you what you want in this container. You can change that up. And then the cards container, I'm now going to add four images in here to act as our cards. So image 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 and image so here's our four images this card's container as well the only adjustment i've made is i've set the row gap to 40 so that's this gap here just to space them out a little bit more so i'm now going to images and select my card images these are all the same height by the way so this effect does work the best with uh, images or containers being the same height because when they stack it sort of looks like a neat little stack compared to them being a bit all over the place. So here's our four cards. So I'll publish this now. And what you can see is we've got our section and it's looking pretty good already, but there's no motion effects in play at the moment. So we'll add them now. So I'll start with the text. So to do that, we'll click on the text container. We're going to advanced. We'll click on motion effects and we want it sticky to the top. We want this offset to be 100 because as you can see here on scroll, the container sticks right at the top of the page, which I don't think looks very good. We want a bit of spacing up there. So I'll add 100 up here. So now there's a slight gap, 100 pixel gap, which makes it look a little bit neater. And then we want it to stay in column. So what this means is it'll stay within the section that you're scrolling and then it'll stop at the bottom. So you can see it working now. This here can sometimes happen where the container actually scrolls into the padding of the parent container. So to avoid that, you can go into your text container and just add the same padding at the bottom as what's in the parent container. So that's 8 rem at the bottom. So if we add that space in here, and now publish that, the container should, yeah, it'll leave the gap there at the bottom. So that's all you need to do for the left hand side. For the cards, we need to make each card sticky, just like we did the text. So we're going to the advanced settings and go into motion effects, sticky top, sticky offset. So for the top card, we want it to be the same as the text. And we also want it to stay in column like the text. So what this does is it means the card and the text will both stick at the exact same time. So they'll stay in line, which is exactly what we want. We also want this card to be at the bottom uh, underneath the other cards on scroll. So make sure to set a Z index of one for this card. Next card, we'll do the same in terms of Z index. We want it to be on top of card one. So we're going to set this one to two and then we'll go motion effects sticky again. The only difference here, we want it to stay in column again, but the only difference is we want the offset not to occur at 100 because then it'll overlap fully. We want it to occur, we'll say 50 pixels more. 
So here is where you choose what sort of gap you want between the cards. So, so for this example, I'll choose 50 pixel because I think that looks like a decent enough gap. But you might only want a tiny gap. You might just want 10 pixel like this. Or you might want it even bigger. You might want 80. But for this example, we'll choose 50. And then the same process for the next card. We want it on top of the second card. So this time a Z index of 3. We want the motion effect set up as top. Sticky offset now will be another 50 on top of 150. So it'll be 200 pixels. And then again, we want it to stay in column. So just check that's working by scrolling slightly. And you can see it's another 50 pixels beyond card two. And then finally for card four, we'll set that up with a Z index of four. So it's on top of the rest of them. Motion effects, top, sticky top. This time we want our sticky offset as 250. And again, stay in column. And we'll publish that. So what we've got here is our section now, which is almost complete with our sticky text on the left and our sticky cards on the right. And you'll notice on the scroll, everything sticks as it should. However, when we hit the bottom of the section, card four seems to scroll above the other cards. And what we want to do is retain the sort of structure of the sticky cards like this. So when you get to the bottom of the section, they, they stick like this and you can scroll beyond them. So to do that, we need a little nifty little bit of CSS to make sure that when we hit this point, card one is now hitting the bottom, card two hits the bottom of the section, card three hits the bottom, and then card four is already there, it's already hitting the bottom, rather than them all trying to reach the bottom of this section. So what I've got here is a code pen with the code inside that I'll resolve this, and I'll include this in the video description. So I'll just copy this in first. And what you want is this code to go into the cards container under advanced in custom CSS. So I'll paste this in and publish. And we'll see what's happening now. So if we look on this uh, section now on scroll, we've got our rotate effect. And card four is sticking exactly where it should. Or rather, the other three cards are sticking above it exactly where we should. And you can scroll on to the next section. So how does this work then, this code? So basically, it works by adding a margin bottom to each card that requires it to make sure that all the cards hit the bottom of the parent container at the exact same time. So the first three cards will need slightly different margin bottoms, whereas the fourth card doesn't need any because it's already hitting the bottom of the uh, parent container. So it works by, it's all dependent on this offset space value. So this needs to be the value of the difference between the sticky offsets of our images. So the first image, if you remember, our sticky offset was 100. Our second one was 150. And our third one was 200. And our fourth one, 250. So this means there's a difference between them of 50 pixel. So if you set up the value of this variable here to whatever your difference was or is, and in this case, it's 50, the CSS will do the rest because I've set up a little calculation here to calculate the margin bottom that uses the offset space. So that gets your cards all sticking in the correct position uh, when you reach the bottom of the scroll. But I've also added a little rotation effect. This is optional. You don't need to add this. So card one, there's no rotate. Card two, I've rotated it three degrees. Card, uh, sorry, card three after that is rotated slightly more at six degrees and card four is rotated at nine degrees so you end up with the full effect like this you'll see here as well because there's a rotation now this seems much closer to the bottom than the text so the way around this is to simply add more padding at the bottom of this uh, parent section so i'll go back into here I'll go into the main container and I'll up this to 10 rem. So if I publish this now, you'll see that these are more in line now. So it looks a bit tidier. So now we can look at how to make this responsive because it's complete on desktop. It's behaving as we want it to. 
but we need to tweak it slightly for mobile. So I'll go back to the editor. The first thing I'd do is probably reduce this gap size on smaller screens. So on tablet landscape, go into the column settings for gap, and I'll probably set this to 60. Uh, mobile landscape will go, will go 50. And then on mobile, the text and the cards stack on top of each other like this and this gap's pretty large so what I'll do here is I'll reduce the gap uh, in text I'll get rid of the padding at the bottom so now they're, they're stuck together now so it's gone too small and I'll add a gap here of 40 pixel per row so that'll add a nice little gap there and then within the cards container this 40 pixel I'll reduce to 20 pixel um, 20 pixel row gap from 40. Also quite important here is we don't want this text to be sticky on mobile, otherwise it could get quite messy. So we'll go to motion effects and ensure mobile portrait is removed. So I'll take that off. Now we'll publish that and see where we're at. So I'll resize this for mobile. And what you can see now is our text no longer sticks, so we can scroll past that. Our cards have a 20 pixel gap now, which is a bit more appropriate for mobile, and they still stick. But what we can see here is there's still quite a large gap at the top here of 100 pixels. So I'll reduce that to 40, and then the cards also have quite a large gap between them of 50. So I'll, I'll halve that to 25 as well. So let's look how to do that. So the first image. The offset we from mobile will change to 40 from 100. And then the second image, because we now want a gap between them of 25 rather than 50, we'll change this to 65 because it, it will go from 40 to 65, which will mean the next one will be another 25 on top of that. So 90. And then the final one will be 115. So what this does mean though, is we have to change in our custom CSS, our uh, offset spacing, because it's no longer 50 for mobile, it's 25. So I'll change it here, because we'll design mobile first, and I'll add a little media query down here. So media, so this is for screens above uh, mobile. So minimum widths of 768 pixels will put our offset space back to 50 pixels so now that should work on mobile and every other screen size so i'll publish this so now if we look on mobile we can see the cards stack at 40 pixel from the top and they each stack a bit closer together, 25 pixel now instead of 50. So it looks a bit tidier on mobile. Uh, the, the final thing you might want to do is remove the rotation for mobile, just because it does sit very close to the edge of the screen when the cards rotate. So this is optional, but if you do want to re remove the rotation, I have added a bit of code in the code pen saying re remove rotations from mobile. And what this does in the media query that we've just added it puts the rotations within that to say basically don't let them happen on screens that are below the mobile size and then it, it basically removes these from the normal css here so if i copied these in if i copied all this code in to our custom css and replaced this we now don't have the rotations happening on mobile like this so quite neat but on bigger screen sizes, we still have the rotations and the larger spacings. So yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, I think actually the final thing on mobile in your main parent container, you should make the padding top and bottom the same now. So I'll put this as 8rem, or you might want it slightly less, I'll put it as 6rem for padding top and bottom, just so there's consistency in the design. So now we can see 6rem here and underneath our last card, 6rem there. So I hope you found this one useful, guys. All you need to remember 
in the code once you've copied it in is to change your offset space from 50 or 25 on mobile to whatever your offset space is in your design and once you've done that you'll achieve this really cool card stacking effect that works even when you scroll beyond the last card so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it guys and i'll see you in the next video